My name is Ramsony and welcome back to Against the Storm. We are ready for our first real embarkment here. We've chosen an area that has an adjacency of a royal outpost, which gives us one additional order in each of the pools. We also have an archaeologist's office as a new essential building, and ancient excavation sites may be found here. We can see a list of the trees and what the trees are going to be giving us. The trees are each going to give us copper, or possibly give us copper, as well as pigmentation here, and plant fibers, and a smattering of the natural resources we can find in the area. So we can embark with only two embarkation points. I'm going to choose here. Hmm. Which of these stars do I think will be better? The second start has the ability to start with 10 simple tools, which will give me the ability to open some areas that I otherwise might not have access to, specifically solve some glade events that I might not otherwise be able to. Yeah, let's take the eight humans. And I will also take some wood so that I can create some homes early on, and I will take some eggs to feed them? No, oh, I'll double down on the roots. There we go. We can see here the forest mysteries. In Drizzle, we will have Gift from the Woods active. There seem to be ideal conditions to create Amber. Gain five Amber for every Drizzle season, plus an additional five for each hostility level you've reached. Interesting. So we're just generally going to get some amber over time. There's also Gentle Dawn, New Year, New Challenges. Gain three to Global Resolve for three minutes every time you discover a new glade. Duration stacks. Ooh. I'm definitely incentivized to actually go hunting for glades here at the very start, which I really want to do. There's Looming Darkness, negative four to Global Resolve in Storm. Piercing Winds, fuel efficiency is 200% lower in Storms from three hostility onwards. Uh, Faint Flame... Uh, resources that are sacrificed in the hearth burn 40% faster, also from three onwards, and vanishing goods. Some goods seem to be mysteriously vanishing. Maybe there's a thief in the settlement. Villagers have a 10% chance of consuming twice the amount of goods when they use a service. And it scales with hostility. Alright. Alright, 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 alright. Let's go. Sacrificing. During especially hard times, you can sacrifice additional goods, you can burn additional fuel in order to temporarily gain some positive effects. Those positive effects typically being resolve. It will burn them incredibly quickly, but might be necessary to get you through the wrong storm. And then there's uh, hostility and forest mysteries. We actually just went through these. Hailstorm can kill villagers in the storm, but if they have a home, they'll be safe. Something I said in the last video. So... We start off with three blueprints that we can immediately choose, but I don't know what I want to choose because we do have the ability to scavenge from what we already have on the map. We can put down one scavenging camp there. Beautiful. Uh, I also need to make sure that I have some woodcutters very early on. Mmm, cutting into both of these glades very, very quickly. Sounds good to me. Uh, I almost want to go for a dangerous glade very quickly as well. Should I go only one woodcutter in the opening here, or two? Two woodcutters is... I don't need the extra wood right now for creating shelters, which does remind me I should create some shelters. One, two, three. And then there's also a stone... Oh, there's camp back here, maybe? Yeah, let's do that. Move the camp all the way up into that corner. And then make a path around and out for us. Excellent. So I'll have three people in my woodcutter's camp. I'll have uh, two in the stonecutter's camp and two in the scavenger's camp, leaving me with two people just hanging around, helping us build. Sounds good to me. I'm going to look at the first blueprint, but I may not select it just yet. Herbalist camp, plantation, and forager's camp. So the forager's camp can be used to forage resources that I otherwise can't access, specifically the insects I don't think I have a way of foraging yet, as well as the vegetables. I already have the ability to get grain from other things, I believe. The plantation uses nearby farm fields to produce berries and plant fiber, 
and the herbalist camp is for gathering herbs, berries, and mushrooms. So until I know whether or not I have farm fields, or until I know whether or not I have herbs, berries, mushrooms, vegetable, grain, insects, I should hold off on making the selection. It's obviously increased time here. All right. Uh, also, it's bringing my attention to City Building's archaeologist's office for 10 planks, 8 bricks, and 4 fabric. A building designed to help you study the past can be used to locate archaeological discoveries or improve the settlement's exploration capabilities. That is not something I want to immediately build here, as you may imagine. Let's get a couple of people doing some scavenging. Scavenge me! I'm gonna finish this woodcutter's camp as well. Let's set its priority slightly higher because I would like to start cutting through. Three people in that. And yeah, the shelter construction. I'll make a higher priority than everything else as well. Being offered three orders here, and we can immediately start picking through them. Ooh! Okay. So, we could clear a glade, complete one glade event, just one, in order to get 30 jerky, three parts, and four newcomers to the village. We could also make 10 planks in order to get 10 planks back, as well as 10 fabric and 10 bricks. We do actually have to trade the initial 10 blanks. So this is only maintaining the amount of 10 blanks I have, but then giving me 10 fabric and 10 bricks. This would actually be the ability to build the archaeologist's office really early on, right? So let's look at the needs for the archaeologist's office. Yep, 10 plank, 8 brick, and 4 fabric. If I turned in 10 planks, I would immediately have the resources to finish the archaeologist's office. Do I? I? I think I want that. I don't really know what it'll do, but it sounds cool. Oh, also, we have a new cornerstone to gain here. Woodcutting is way easier. Woodcutters camps production 40% faster or specialized grain farming techniques. I'm going to go with the woodcutters. Absolutely. Very glad I don't have a second woodcutter's camp at this point. I probably would have just taken it back. Um, right, we're not looking for those. We're looking for our orders. We will pick our first order as funding. Just because it's really important that I have the ability to access these fabrics and bricks without having to actually invest deeply into it just yet. Oh, interesting. Well, we can actually get halfway there very early on. Uh, there's a shelters objective here. It wants us to have need for shelter fulfilled on eight villages, which we already have, uh, as well as 20 wood. And it will give us five planks, three newcomers, and 20 mushrooms for doing so. We could also build a trading post and get five amber in order to start getting these rewards. I'm going to take the shelters because we can literally just like immediately turn that in. Ah, here we go. Booming economy. Sell 15 goods worth of amber to a trader or a trade route. We'll see traders and trade routes later. Uh, pack of crops. We've seen this previously, right? The ability to bundle up a bunch of the things that you have grown and then sell them. Either in orders or, again, trading. We'll see that later again. And glades. Cut through the forest to discover four glades. We're definitely going to be taking this. This also gives us the perk Scout's Pack. Workers are assigned to glade events and can carry five more items. Or workers assigned to glade events can carry five more items. Man, there's a lot of plank involvement here. If I cut through to enough glades, I actually would not need to... Uh... Actually, if I just cut through to four glades right now... What's the worst thing that can happen to me? It takes a while? Yeah, that's the worst thing that can happen to me. Okay, I don't want to try and get ten planks from this and then fund the other objectives. So I'm actually going to want to go and create a crude workstation ourselves, and pop this bad boy down somewhere. And I'm even going to give them some limits here. So I'm going to say, limit, you may make exactly 10 planks maximum. Because I don't want to use all of my wood making way too many planks. If I leave a worker here just errantly doing it. Of 
obviously a lot of buildings and not that many builders at the moment. We've only got two of them free, so... We're taking a little bit of extra time. All's well, though. Our shelter need is fulfilled. And in fulfilling that need, we also decrease our requirements for wood ongoing. So we should complete that next mission very quickly here. Uh, I'm going to leave my builders building rather than trying to do the stonecutters camp just at the moment. Especially considering we still have the crude workstation to finish. Okay, first glade. We've broken into it. And small encampment. If I give you six roots, roots are very easy for us to make, uh, and send two people in, I can get them to either welcome new people from this small encampment, a human and a beaver, or send it to the citadel and get us 10 amber. I'm getting welcome, welcome new people. More people is more speed. More hands to make lighter work. Alright, we're in clearance. So it's Drizzle, Storm, and Clearance, right? The three seasons then? Okay, let's fulfill the objective for shelters. Now we also still need another shelter here. Uh, I guess as soon as we finish off some of these rocks, it'll be a lot easier to do. But I can just pop a shelter over there and some paths around it. Great. So the limit is 10. So you don't need to make 10. I believe limit, yeah, production limit. Workers will produce goods until the limit has been reached. After that, they will try to continuously keep it at that level. Okay, so yes, this will still be a limit of 10. It won't make them produce 10 here. It will make them produce five in order to get to the limit of 10. Still haven't taken any of these... Uh... <laughs> Oh, I'm starting to feel bad about that, actually. Reed field, small... Yeah, nothing in this is asking for... me to have... Uh, any any of those specific camps. I really need to break into another glade here and see what it says. Ah, uh, yeah. People are idling here, unfortunately, because we don't have enough wood, so... Just need wood to generate a little bit faster. Okay, so we do have some farm fields out here. We got some farm fields as well as an herbalist camp's collection area. Hmm. I mean, I should I should definitely go for the farm first, right? Yeah, this is consistently generating resources at least. I'm gonna take the plantation first. Being offered a brewery, as well as a cookhouse and a carpenter. So a cookhouse is the type of building here that is capable of building a diversity of goods, but it's not as efficient as other things might have been. Same as the carpenter here. So the carpenter can make planks at a two-star rate, simple tools and packs of luxury goods similarly. The ability to make simple tools is very, very important for us. Hmm, I wonder if I want to take the carpenter. Cookhouse can produce skewers and biscuits and pigment. Two people here will eat biscuits, one person will eat skewers. Although I would have to make the wheat in order to make the biscuits and make the meat in order to make the skewers. So let's take the carpenter to start off with. Leather worker, lumber mill, and kiln. So lumber mill, I don't super need at this point, noting that I already have the ability to produce planks of the two. We can even see as we're hovering over the lumber mill here, what our current best is. And that's showing us that I already have the ability to make two star planks. So this is an increase for that. But I don't have the ability to make scrolls or packs of trade goods yet. So that plus sign represents, this is your first recipe for creating those. Getting fabric and water skins. Water skins from leather. Yeah, we we need not one, but need leather in order to use the leather worker. 
this is not a resource that I can rotate for anything else. Unfortunately, what that means for us is that leather can only be gotten from a ranch right now, and we don't have ranches, so there's no reason I'm taking the leather worker. Uh, I guess it'll be kiln. And now we're off at a trapper's camp, a herb garden, and the herbalist camp. I'm now going to take the herbalist camp. So this glade really, 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 really helped me pick the line of things I actually want to be doing after that point. Uh, I do have a beaver now, so let's get the beaver to do some woodworking. And I just want to widen out this area so that I can actually start building some production buildings in there too. Unfortunately, plank production is extremely slow. Make wood faster! Gosh! That's your problem. Please don't stop progress again. Oh, no! They have more wood. All's well. Continuing to expand the area. Uh, hmm. It's not very far from our hearth, unfortunately. I'm not sure I want to set up a, a second storage out here to be the repository that everyone drops their goods off to. But I was considering it. Uh, okay, the plantation definitely does want to go over in this area. There is pretty much always going to be a good position for it. Let's move the woodcutter's camp very slightly here. Actually, I'm going to put the woodcutter's camp where I will later put the herbalists. And then expand the path network out. Wait, what are my planks going towards? They're being used for something right now. Neither of you cost... Oh, I get two planks to make the plantation, as it turns out. Plantation has no farm fields nearby. I will rectify that in a bit of moment. I hope to unlock even more farmable fields back there. Thank you for revealing one. Uh, that might be the only remaining one that needed to be revealed. Let's get humans in the plantation. Excellent. Two more glades need to be opened, and one more plank needs to be generated. I mean, realistically, let's just... There you go. Deliver the planks immediately. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I need to get this archaeologist's office down. Remember when we were prioritizing that? Deserted caravans. Global production is 50% faster, but trading is unavailable. I actually don't think trading is available to me yet. I think I need to uh, unlock that through the upgrades in the Smoldering City. We will see it very soon, though. But because of that, deserted caravans, of course. Absolutely. And then some new people for our camp. Ooh, a simple tool. No, I do want to get another beaver. We've got more woodworking to do. Okay. Let's finish the funding the expedition. Handing that in gives us a blueprint for a brickyard, a smokehouse, and a cookhouse. I like the brickyard because between the three of the production facilities that we now have, with the brickyard included, we can replace the crude workstation. The crude workstation is worse than bad at producing planks and fabric and bricks. It is so inefficient at it. But the brickyard, obviously pretty efficient at making those bricks, eh? They named it after that. The... Wait, do I not have fabric production? Oh, I thought I had fabric production as well. That must have just been one of the options I was looking at, but ultimately did not take. Unfortunate. That's okay. So this is a brickyard. 
I'm going to prevent myself from actually building that because as I just realized, Brickyard is going to cost eight planks. So what I want to do is first, let's get the archaeologist office down. The one that I said I was going to do. You should have all the resources for production of that immediately already. There it goes. Okay, and then... How are you going with production? Let's get the limit to five, and that's global limit. Because then that's enough to create the carpenter. I do want to get this down as soon as possible. Let's pop you there. So now we have our archaeologist's office, a building to help you study the past, can be used to locate archaeological discoveries or improve the settlement's exploration capabilities. So the first upgrade here is either work mobilization, the courage and hard work of the town's scouts mobilizes other workers to be more productive, all workers get a 10% higher chance of doubling their production for every dangerous glade event that is being worked on. Or... Short range scanner reveals the location of the closest archaeological discovery. I'm going to do that because I want to see what that is. I'm going to need 10 planks to do that. Thankfully, I have enough amber already. Well, now I need more planks. Dang. That's okay. We are about to make a carpenter. Or rather, we are in the process of making a carpenter. Next order is up. Keep humans resolve at about 24 for 30 seconds. That'll give us two more humans. That'll give us a basket of pies as well as a ancient sewing technique for making coats more consistently. I don't think I need that. Aid for the lizard clan in a pack of provisions. Couple pack of provisions there. I'm leaning towards building materials because this is something I'm already a little bit capable of doing, whereas the others kind of require me to go more deeply out of my own way. Uh, grain. Isn't eaten raw, but can be processed. Gives us five humans. I think I want to go with the happy beavers here instead. Reinforced axes, wood cutting is way faster, as well as a handful of biscuits and box of simple tools. I need to get the beavers resolve above 22 for 60 seconds, which is going to be a little difficult until I start making some later game resources. So, something I should have done before is turn planks off in the crude workstation. I don't want to make planks here anymore. Let's make some fabric and bricks. Why that? Also turn stone on for the bricks to be able to pull from. Why this? Well, I need some of them for the building materials, you see. Specialization bonus in this area of wood cutting. Unfortunately, I don't have anyone that can do that right now. So here we can see the carpenter only uses five wood in order to make two planks. And they do it in 20 seconds versus 26. Although this has two people in here, so... No, it doesn't get slower if I take another person out. Interesting. I'm going to turn off the production of these others, and then I'm going to say maximum at any one period of time here, I'm going to want 10 planks. You can no longer create planks at all, but maximum, I want six of each bricks and fabric. You know what I really need is to move my woodcutter now. Hopefully it's revealed enough of the other area. Yeah, it's definitely revealed enough of the other area to move off. Because I need this to now start... Whoa, that's the plantation I was attempting to move. Oops. Uh, I need this to start creating more openings into glades for me. So... This corner gives us access to two glades pretty quickly. One of them is dangerous, but I'm more than happy to take that risk. Uh, I will have them prioritize just accessing the dangerous glade. There we go. And then let's deal with the other glade. Also try and give you some extra speed. 
Actually, something I should also take some time to pay attention to is the level of our ancient hearth. So, hub we see here at the bottom. Hubs can be upgraded by building homes, decorations, and service buildings within the range of the hearth. Each hub level will grant you bonuses to resolve, production speed, and production output. The bonuses do stack with each hub in your settlement. So we currently have more than enough villagers in population near this hearth, homed, in order to upgrade it. But we need four comfort decorations within range of the hearth. So... Comfort decorations are our green ones at the start. So we have benches, barrels, fence, and fence corners. Something I often do, kind of like mindlessly, is just put four fences up here. But I've got some free space in here. I've got, you know, some space here. If I want to make my town look pretty, I've got some space for a little bit of decoration. So let's get some benches there, and then a barrels. Beautiful. And then I literally only need one more. But I don't know, maybe I use more than that. Um, so if that's the archaeology. So if this is going to be the brickyard, this area is also going to be... This area is also going to be available. So I'm going to use two fence corners and a single fence to start setting up for it. Ooh, we're low on fuel. Actually having difficulty getting enough wood here. Ooh. Yeah, the woodcutters are still on their task. Yeah, we should be fine. I may want to actually create a second woodcutting camp here, though. <gasps> we've done it. We've broken into a dangerous glade, and in doing so, we've revealed the Rain Spirit Totem, a totem built by the fishermen. It seems to have affected the weather, making the rain heavier. So flooding is a glade event that is active while this is. Uh, though it may be primitive, fishman magic can be very effective. It destroys all roads in the settlement in 10 minutes, mind. And also, all villagers move 30% slower. The requirement for solving it is simple tools will do it, thankfully. Uh, coal, oil, resin, planks, infused tools, or sea marrow would do it. And while we are working this, so for the four minutes that we are actually, actually, is it gonna take four full minutes if I have two people on? Okay, for the three minutes that we are working on this event, we will have active Rage of the Forest. The forest's hostility is temporarily increased by 150 points. For salvage, we can either get 20 fabric and 40 mushrooms, or we can convert it in order to get a Rain Spirit Totem, which has been cleansed by the Holy Flame. It will decrease hostility by 50. I like it. Let's do that second one. Although, before we do any of those... What I need to do is figure out what I want to spend on it, because simple tools, it'll cost six of those, but I do have ten simple tools, and I can immediately use those to open this medium abandoned cache here. An abandoned cache of goods, this could be a lost shipment or something more valuable. It's giving us advanced coopering, plus two to barrel production from every yield. Villagers move 10% faster with sturdy boots, as well as two food stockpiles for the meta resource that we will use to upgrade in the smoldering city. Or we could get 20 amber as well as 0.75 Queen's Grace. I definitely want to go for the goods here. I definitely want to finish that. So that's asking me not to use my tools to finish the Rain Spirit Totem. So how am I going to approach this then if I'm not using the Rain Spirit Totem? I'll tell you, if I had a kiln down, I could make coal. Maybe that's what I want to do. Get in the kiln. Hmm. Costs us four bricks to make this? I want to finish building materials before I do anything else, I think. I took the carpenter, didn't I? I did. I did take the carpenter. So because I have the carpenter, I actually have the ability to generate simple tools. I need copper bars or crystallized dew to do it, so that's the high resource that I need. But otherwise, wood. So, 
I think for that reason, I'm actually going to spend my simple tools on the Rain Spirit Totem and immediately start working this event. And I do want to get the decreased hostility of the forest if possible. It's also a large encampment here. Oh, wow. Welcome new people. I do like new people. It's going to be difficult to feed them all eventually. We have no workers in the entire town free. Everyone's completely occupied. Love it. Hopefully we cut through this glade in just a moment because that would be very, very helpful. Completing one of our exploration tasks for us. Building materials. We now have a huge amount of planks. Uh, with the amount of planks that we have access to, I now think I can create a brickyard. Oh, wait a second. Maybe I shouldn't. The brickyard will help me make the kiln more easily as well. Yeah, never mind. I actually do have to make the brickyard. Okay. Unfortunately, it looks like our workers are idling here, but why are they idling? I do have 23 wood accessible to them as well. Oh, they're idling because they've reached above the limit of 10. I mean, it, let's override the limit then. So they actually start producing again immediately. Because I don't have any builders to deliver the excess planks to the brickyard, so they still sit in my main warehouse inventory, making my carpenters think they don't need to continue making planks. That's what's going on there. What I need is some of my workers to come back from the events out here that they are contributing towards. Okay, building material complete. We get two wildfire essence for our task, as well as 40 clay and 40 leather, and a queen's grace. Queen's Grace giving us a new blueprint. Provisioner, bakery, or cookhouse? Uh... So with the provisioner, we would get the ability to make flour and barrels, which we currently don't have. With the bakery, we would get the ability to make the biscuits and pie. And with the cookhouse, we could make skewers, biscuits, and pigment. None of these do we have access to yet. However... These require flour as a base resource in order to make those biscuits. I need to be able to make flour first to actually be able to translate it into any goods afterwards. I'm going to take the provisioner here. And remain low on fuel for a wee moment. Come on, it's just one tree between you and the red... Why are you not cutting down that tree? I guess maybe you couldn't access it. Yeah, that must have been it. Good lord. We're low on fuel, so we can't even sacrifice fuel in order to try and keep people's morale up. And their morale is low. Although, eh, it's about to be less of a problem when we actually complete these tasks. Hey, there we go. So we've got the converted rain totem, decreasing hostility of the forest by 50, and we also swing the 150 increase that we had previously while we were working on that event. So that's a 200 difference in our hostility right now. Which means the forest is going to be on level zero rather than level three that it was on previously. Ooh. Hey, Earl's camp is perfect right there. Actually, is that already gonna output? Could I just put an herbalist in there and, and start collecting? I'd love if that was the case. We also welcome new people in. We also explored a new glade, of course, so we can unlock that. Which did give us more bricks as well, thankfully. So those bricks can go towards the construction of the kiln, which will then go to the... 
This is what I love, the whole chaining kind of thing that's going on. So I did all of that in service of getting bricks and the bricks make a kiln and the kiln makes the coal and the coal makes the pigment and the pigment makes the incense and the incense makes the religion. All of that is true, but none of that is actually what we're going to be currently doing. What we're really looking for is, I mean, more planks for the archaeological support is one way to go about it. Copper bars for the simple tools would be really nice as well. Uh, I think I do have in one of these, yeah, it's the brickyard, the ability to make crystallized dew. Crystallized dew is made out of spark dew, so I should probably get a spark dew collector down. The spark dew uh, collector here is a rain collector. Uh, there. No, no, it's too far from me. There. That'll do. It's asking us to choose a new blueprint at the moment as well. Sure, I'll have a look. Human house, lizard house, tavern. So the big problem here is what I really want is the beaver house, because the beaver house gives them the extra resolve that they want in order to be happy beavers. But... Lacking that, the beavers do like leisure. So I could try and take the tavern, but then the problem becomes I need to make ale. And in order to make ale, I'm going to need to make either water skins, pottery, or barrels in order to keep the ale. And also, I'm going to need grain in order to make the ale itself. And I don't have any buildings for all of that stuff. Yet. So I think I'm going to lean towards just fulfilling resources here with the human house. Hmm. Interesting. I think I'm going to do it. Let's set up a second half. I don't need all of my villagers to report to that first one. In fact, I think having a second one here is going to be a great idea. What I'm really going to want as well is an additional woodcutter's camp out here. Because I need to simplify the terrain around the hearth just a wee bit. Let's also make sure that there is a warehouse so that people don't have to run all the way back to the other base. Although, no, the warehouse cannot be moved, so wherever I put it, I do want it to be able to stay there. Alright. Let's take the people out of the carpenter. I don't think we need any more planks for the moment, just yet. Let's also take the people out of the crude workstation don't have the ability to make any more fabric out of that. I mean, we'd have to use leather. Actually, hang on. I do need to make just a little bit more fabric. So hang on. Let's re-include you and tell you that you can use leather in order to make that. Personalized you. We should start collecting that resource at this point. We do have 40 clay. We can start making bricks here. But, like, looking at my resources... Yeah, bricks are not a problem for me right now. I don't want to overproduce them if I don't need them right now. Come on, focus on opening that area up just a little bit. I want to build that building. Second half coming up. Boom. Let's get a lizard working that, noting that the lizard will be happy to be working next to the fire. What with the cold blood and all? Let's also... Noting that... Yes, beavers enjoy engineering. So we will get two beavers here in the rain collector. Start making spark to you for us. They're just enjoying it, so they get plus five to their resolve, which is good. I really need the beavers to have high resolve. 22 would be ideal. The fire's going out. Oh, re wow. Oh, no. 
Uh, I need my woodcutters to cut wood. That's, they're not doing that much and I need them to do that much is the thing about that. Everyone's resolve is very low right now. Oof. Crowded Garavan. Every newcomer group has two additional villages or learn how to cook more efficiently by Sakilda. You gain 10 jerky for every 10 pies produced. So I have two people that like pies and I have two people that like jerky. Unfortunately, they're the same people in the lizards and the humans. So if I manage to start making pies randomly, which, can I do that at all? No, not yet. But if I did, this would give us a lot of jerky alongside of it. Basically doubles our resource output for food. I think I got a lot of people early on. I don't need Crowded Caravan to give us more people. Speaking of more people, time to get more people. I need, I need beavers. Absolutely, I need beavers. We've got so many non-beavers working beaver jobs. Oh, everyone's resolve is so low. Oh. It's hunger, right? Combined effects, 22. Looming darkness. What? But we're in drizzle. Oh, okay, yeah. So the looming darkness modifier immediately disappeared and we're all fine. Uh, we've upgraded this hearth with the decorations we've made and that has made it an encampment which gathered around the blazing flyer. Folks keep each other's spirit high. Plus two to global resolve and the ancient hearth's Resistance to corruption is increased by 150%. And we're still low on fuel. Uh, take out the crude workstation. Definitely put uh, alchemies. What people need to enjoy to succeed at this job, but that's fine. No one, no one has alchemy at the moment. Yes, kiln. It says that I've built zero, so I know that I can still build one of these, and I know that I still need to as well. Uh, or I really wanted to go right there, but unfortunately, there is a root that is not yet plucked from the ground. I get. I can put it next to the the crude workstation. That's good enough. I want our wood on average to be increasing, please. Because I need to use it to make coal later. Oof. Uh, I can't start doing that yet, right? Well, actually, coal is a very efficient fuel. If I was burning coal, I would be burning less, right? So, hang on. One minute of coal. 14 seconds for a wood. So that means... One minute, 14... No, wait! This, this, this would be 140 seconds. This would be two, two and a bit minutes with just the wood. But for the coal, it's... Five! Oh, right! It's not ten wood for one coal, it's ten for five! Okay, this is obviously way more efficient now. Let's start creating that coal. Beaver's resolve is reasonably high. Let's have a look, because uh, I'm going to create a bunch of human houses in just a moment. Ideally, I will create uh, seven of them, so I'm going to need some more bricks. But do you want to quickly hit the bricks for me? Actually, at the same time, creating some crystallized dew would be good. Right? The crystallized dew is used for the creation of the simple tools. So let's get maximum of 10 on that crystallized dew and let the bricks run wild. Still need to keep my crude workshop because I still need to have access to the ability to make fabric. But I would happily let go of that as soon as given the opportunity. Come on, come 
come on, come on. Scavenger camp has no deposits nearby. Ah, that's this one up at the very top. Thankfully, I can now move this. You know, instead of keeping the scavengers camp here, I'm actually going to blow that up. The, the, ooh, not destroy the resource node, though. And make another herbalist camp and put that down here and then assign those two humans to work this. Yes, 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 yes. Additional herb creation at this point is pretty helpful for us. Noting that we use those in the creation of crystallized dew. Alright, get the ability to take more orders. We still just have the happy beavers. What else can we work towards? We can make people happy in order to get more people. Well, actually, it wants me to have eight people and then also have them be reasonably happy. I've got eight people. So I've got a pretty good start there, I think. Especially because I'm about to make their homes. Beavers Resolve. Keep the Beavers Resolve above 26 for 120 seconds. There's also Aesthetic. Have at least 15 Aesthetic decorations in order to get plus two to Berry Baskets. Although that's also on offer from the Beavers Resolve. And Trading Goods. Packs of Trade Goods. I'm going to take the Beavers Resolve and I'm going to focus down the line of trying to make the Beavers and the humans happy here. Really going to need some help with an additional blueprint for that, though. I like how all of our orders are kind of stacked atop one right now, though. Completing one of them will help complete the rest of them. Okay, I now have enough fuel... to... Wait, what is the next step of this chain? Uh, beavers. Are there any beavers in areas that they don't need to be right now? No. All beavers are well utilized. Okay, sure. Then I'll sub people in for the woodcutters camp and then throw two beavers into the carpenter quickly here in order to create some simple tools out of the crystallized dew. I would like to be able to solve the medium event in cache as well as start solving more caches as they come up. Speaking of solving more caches as they come up, let's get the woodcutter camp into a more advanced position so it can start making more caches. Also spread these two out just a wee bit. Yeah, that's good. Actually, can I move you one step back? I can indeed, and that's gonna be important because I can then also build a path out here and have a herbalist working on picking up some more stuff. Giant stone deposits here. I need more people. I feel very limited. as to my workforce. Okay, the second one to be creating crystallized dew at this point. Eh, probably not necessary. But the bricks, though. They're still there making good bricks. Still very important because we are about to make a bunch of human houses over here. So realistically, something like that to start off with. And let's also get this woodcutter to focus on the wood that is otherwise going to stop people from entering this area. Actually, have I got any stone at the moment? I do. I'm going to start paving our roads. Especially around the hub, because I know that the enemy... The enemy. The enemy! My villagers! The enemy will be moving around that area consistently.
Hmm. Gosh, maybe we do need more people again. I'm getting some people with the human resolve at the very least. Yeah, just got a noblest camp there that's not really going to be utilized that much. Maybe my personal strategy of trying to exhaust every resource node I come across is not ideal. I haven't even got any free builders to do any work right now. Oof. Yikes. Actually, hang on, no, I've got one very dutiful lizard going about trying to prepare some of this stuff. Thankfully, Drizzle won't last much longer. It's a little bit of a damper on our resolve across the entire camp at the moment. A new cornerstone. All houses have room for one more villager. That sounds really good right now. And a set of specialized tools made to extract artifacts. Gain two artifacts, the Citadel resource, for every two completed dangerous and forbidden glade events. Oof. I really like the idea of that. I'm gonna take it. Get me some more bonus resources for leveling up stuff back in the base, please. Again here, I'm gonna prioritize beavers. And humans as well, I guess, secondarily. Uh, do we get our orders soon? Yeah, five and a half minutes. Sorry, six minutes full. Oh my god, I forgot that we'd be making simple tools this whole time. Guys, get on out of there. And crowd back into one of the woodcutters camps. Then two of the humans can go and resolve this, giving us the advanced coopering as well as sturdy boots and food stockpile. Herbalist camp for all of those next to itself. I mean, wow, this herbalist camp actually literally just ran out of stuff. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to destroy this herbalist camp and then just move this one there. That's what I really should have done in the first place. The people who were assigned will move with the building. Please, open the dangerous glade. It's right next to you. Don't have that many free people to deal with it right now. But it's not going to be too much of an issue, I don't think. Uh, okay, I'm gonna move the woodcutters camp further up, like a lot further up, like there, there, because I'm attempting to make space for human shelters. Three of them there, honestly. I can't, I can't build this one, actually. I still need to be able to access the dangerous glade through at the back. Human's resolve is getting pretty good, though. Another glade open. This one just has sea marrow as well as storm bird nest. Not a particularly impactful one, although now we've got a dangerous glade, and that gives us a event in the petrified tree a strange tree that's been turned to stone by the rain it is radiating its sickness to all of the other trees around it petrified wood adds sickness of the petrified tree spreading through the settlement it destroys all stored wood planks included uh while we are felling the tree though tree felling itself is 70 percent slower fine. I think we do that then, and 
use all of our woodcutters to do other things right now. If they're going to be 70% less efficient right now, why not move them onto different tasks instead? Where's the other woodcutter? There we are. So hopefully I can use this as a time to get some vast and very quick expansion in other areas. So, Beaver's Resolve. Again, Beaver's Resolve is everything I should be focusing on. They want housing. Can't give them that. Don't have the blueprint. Biscuits. Let's have a look at our recipes. I don't know how to make biscuits. I do know how to make flour, though, in the provisional, so I can make biscuits later. Uh, pickled goods. Pretty sure I don't have the ability to pickle any goods. Nope. Clothing, I don't have the ability to make that. Leisure, I don't have the ability to make ale for the leisure right now. Uh, education, we don't have the ability to make that. And luxury, don't have the ability to make that. So basically, everything the beavers want, I don't have. I could attempt to burn more fuel in order to increase. Eh, I actually really prefer not to do that if possible here. I also do need one of you to continue the simple tool creation, because that actually has been very helpful. Someone should also start making some more planks. Actually, I'm also going to tell both of these hearths, uh, yeah, I've got coal in the back. Don't burn wood. How dare you? Only burn the coal. That is my most efficient resource there for you. These cats are in. They're idled at the petrified tree because I haven't decided what I want to do with it. I'm going to send it to the Citadel and get a uh, reputation boost as well as some amber here. Because I don't think the plant fiber and stone would do too much for us. Uh, humans are so close to having enough resolve. I just need one. Well, not one more. Maybe two more human houses, but... We're very close. Well, I'm just hoping that human house at the back is enough. Okay. Rolled over into the next year's clearance. got enough of the simple tools just yet? I mean, we can start having people attempt to deliver it over. Um, clay, fabric, and wildfire essence. I'm going to send this to the Citadel as well, actually. Yeah, okay, that tool will be done in time. My god, some very dense dubri bushes back here. Herbalist camp will go wild with those. Run absolutely a muck on them. It does look like I haven't got a lot of progress here just yet. Which is kind of, uh, kind of concerning me as I look across at the amount of time and realize that we are almost an hour into episode two. Choose an order in Lizard's Resolve. Keep Lizard's Resolve above 20 for a while, as well as have five provisions. I can make the provisions. I have a provisioner. Serving ale. Can't do that. Don't have leisure. Uh, farm fields. I do have a lot of farm fields, but I don't have that many crops. I'm going to take Lizard Resolve, because I think uh, we're not too far from starting to complete that. And yikes, this is going to be even tougher. They want a huge amount of jerky and goods and, and skewers. I don't make food well. They want me to fulfill the need for education. I don't do that well either. Sure, I'll select it. I, I Honestly, I probably shouldn't have selected there. I should have just waited and figured out what I will do later. The petrified tree is almost done. There we go. That was one of the glade events completing for a little bit of extra. 
Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, it's this second Glade event is going to be the extra Queen's Grace that gets us our next blueprint. Although I do think... Interesting. We're being offered a Weaver, a Clothier, or a Smokehouse here. The Weaver is the best ability for us to create fabric so far, but maybe we don't care about fabric. Clothia would really want us to have that fabric first and foremost so that we can start creating coats. Humans and beavers both like coats, so that is a resource that they would actually share. There's also a smokehouse there for making jerky, but unfortunately jerky is not enjoyed by beavers. I think I'll make my decision there at the start of the next episode. Until then, my name is Ben Rhapsody, the name of the game has been Against the Storm. Series playlist is up in the top left. YouTube recommendation down below. Streaming pass on the names of the people so generally supporting the Republic on patreon.com slash rhapsody plays that are above the thanks team. A special thanks this episode to Jazzy. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you all next time.